Hello friends! So I have just finished my exams and done my Cambridge celebrations of jumping in a pool, being sprayed with cava. Insert pictures here. Hey. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to actually do this video, but it took me quite a while because like, you know, exams and I like, want to get your priorities straight. And like, I feel like it's a better time for me to talk about my Cambridge experience because like, it's after a year I can really like, really like consolidate my thoughts on it. This video is mostly for those who are considering their university options and uh, are waiting for their um, uh, university to begin. So I uh, hope this is helpful because to me, I remember when I was still waiting for my university to begin, um, I just thought like, mm, all the international, all the YouTube videos that I tried to search for of international students, they either just didn't really cater to me or like they usually didn't talk about certain topics. So I hope like this video kind of helps you answer all these questions and allays all your concerns at the end. And to those who haven't seen me for a while, I got braces. So, just a little context, I am actually born in Hong Kong, I'm Singaporean. I was raised in the Singapore education system, uh, that's how, well, that's what got me here. Honestly, I still haven't really gotten to uh, telling myself that, or telling other people that I'm studying in Cambridge. Like, my whole body just shudders when I utter that word, uh, mostly because I still can't believe it, even after a year. So anyway, let's begin. Yeah, I think the biggest topic, or the most important topic, which I want to talk about is like race and culture. I'm Asian, specifically Chinese. Singapore is not in China, we are like Southeast Asian, but most of us are Chinese. So in terms of talking to people and like conversation starters, like uh, sometimes it is a bit awkward um, because like you kind of understand people are from very different cultures and like different backgrounds. But that also means that it can be very interesting, especially when you get to a point in your conversations, really learning about how different people live uh, halfway across the world from you. And because they're also in Cambridge, like they have different stories. Clearly their lives are filled with very interesting experiences and like it kind of takes a while for your conversations to get there. But like um, at that point, especially in a big group, like for dinners and such. I don't know, I find it very very satisfying to hear about like how other people do live their lives and like they're always interested on like the politics of Singapore, that kind of thing. I know that sounds really nerdy but like sometimes it gets there and like I like to talk about it sometimes because people don't really understand and like at the same time I do like to listen to how their country works. It's, it's just fascinating, yeah. And because of like the different cultures, they also give very very good recommendations of like what to eat whenever you're traveling but that's a later topic. So uh, with regards to making friends, that's a very big issue for like incoming students. In Cambridge, the interactions that you have with people really depend on like which college that you choose to go into and of course it also depends on like the course that you're studying. Um, like for instance, law or engineering uh, because it will kind of affect the type of events that you will be exposed to or you'll be invited to, invited, usually just like open thing or whether you want to go to. Now, of course it will also depend on the amount of time you want to stay in your room, which I can admit sometimes I just want to stay here forever. But yeah, so for each college and um, course, there will there usually be a bunch of people like a committee or just a group of people who want to organize events. Uh, for people to go to. All these different societies encourage like mingling between the people so you definitely won't run out of stuff to do here and you just won't run out of like events to attend to. It's just how much you want to attend or like um, what you want to participate in like and how you organize your time slash how you prioritize what's important to you in uni. Yeah like every other uni. It's mostly just like whether you have the willpower to do so. Okay. In my opinion uh, as a course the lawyers seem to have like the most events that uh, they have to attend to. Well, I'm not a lawyer. This is just my perspective. So, you know, potential lawyers, you guys can look forward to it and like check out other YouTube videos that they have about like the law degree in Cambridge because I think that's quite a big thing here. So if you're like me, on top of being an international student, um, I'm a little shy, I would say, and I have like a resting, disinterested slash judgmental face when I walk down the street. So it does take a little bit more effort, but like when the conversation gets to it, that level, which I mentioned before, yeah, it's very interesting to me. And also, if you're like most international students here, you, you probably have that group of friends or like this friend that you have who are of the same nationality as you. I think that's pretty natural. And for Singaporeans here, and like I know Hong Kongers, they have orientation in their home countries. 
So this to me is always like a good way to like meet people. Like just different types of conversation can just pop up because of like different topics or different activities that like were planned for you. And for other international students as well, like if you don't have orientation, there usually is like this club or society that is solely for like people of um, a certain nationality or people relating to like uh, your country of origin. Like for me as a Singaporean, I have Kumsa, C-U-M-S-A, which is a Singaporean society founded by Lee Kuan Yew. From my perspective, the other way to make friends besides like having orientation or besides like having a mingling session from like a certain uh, event is actually going out to clubs, which is basically our freshest week here. Swaps and formal dinners are also a thing here. So like a swap is basically when you have like two or a few groups of people from like maybe different colleges or different courses and they just like swap and like meet each other or like one dinner. And then formal dinners are you guys have a dinner but it's like much classier and you guys are wearing jackets and blazers and whatnot. And at the end of those uh, said um, formals and um, swaps, you eventually most likely go to a club because the drinking culture here is just really really strong. Also, an important thing for you to make friends and for you to be notified of the events like everywhere in Cambridge is that you really need to download Facebook and if you are like me who only reactivated my Facebook uh, like one month before the start of university yeah that's a problem you should probably go check that out earlier because like notifications for all the orientations and stuff they start from facebook and they never end um the most curious thing which i guess people would want to know is like the accounts of racism here for me like there weren't any terrible events that will like redefine my cambridge life because of any like racist acts from other people honestly the racism against asians isn't that bad um Mostly because I guess there's a lot of us here. I think it was mostly during my first term here, uh, Mikuma's term, that I remember people, usually drunk and like slightly older, so I'm not too sure whether they are students, but uh, like you would hear them try to shout or like try to engage with us by shouting like Ni Hao in that accent. Or like Ching Chong if they're worse. Usually it's from a distance, but, but I always just treat it as like, oh, they're trying to befriend us in a really, 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 really bad way. But to each his own. Um, the worst experience I've ever had, uh, or the most racist thing that like a person has actually done, was that uh, when we were at McDonald's, we were just sitting like at a table, and like some guy just went up with his phone and like try to take a picture of us because like oh it's so unique to see us even though like you can see so many of us walking around when the tourists come so yeah that would be like the worst encounter for me but then again nothing really got to a physical level it's just like um it might disturb you from time to time like for me after a while like it didn't really happen so i guess i'm one of the fortunate ones there are students from other ethnic groups that like um encounter such situations but because I'm not one of them I will not really recount their stories uh, I will include a link below in the description so you guys can check it out a lot of it is covered under the student publication in Cambridge you can read their stories if you're interested yep, in the description below so another issue that I want to talk about is the weather here because I'm an international student and like definitely the weather is very different especially for a person coming from Southeast Asia when we're near the equator. So I come from a place that is really hot and humid throughout the year. So it's very interesting when you come to a place where it experiences all four seasons. To be honest, in your three terms here, the seasons are winter, uh, they are borderline winter, and then a mix of spring, summer, and like a little bit of winter at the end. So, but it does kind of make you appreciate the scenery here because like when um, the third term comes, uh, Easter term, um, like it's very nice seeing all the flowers pop by everywhere. Like when you're walking around the street, what used to be like uh, grim trees um, are starting to flower and like the bushes have flowers and everything, everything has colours and the sky is like cloudy again. Another thing that like I find as an international student very very different is that you get to experience 4 o'clock or 10 o'clock sunsets. Right now it's like 7.30 p.m. This is just natural sunlight so yeah it's kind of cool and I really like that because it just makes you feel that like you have a lot of time to do whatever. Moving on! Spending habits. So one thing that 
I think it wasn't emphasized to me enough was how incredibly expensive it is and like I know Cambridge is already expensive that's one issue but like living in the UK it's so expensive because I convert from Singapore dollars to the British pounds and it's just so painful every time uh, in Singapore, like if I'm 50, I can really get by a day with like less than uh, 10 Singapore dollars. That was my budget for me when I was living in Singapore. Coming over here is like if I want to have three meals a day, I had to spend like more than 10 pounds just so that I can feed myself. Approximate exchange rate is about like two Singapore dollars to like one British pound. So like that's a big issue. So like to me, the value of money has already flown out the window. And like, if you're in London, I suppose it's gonna be much much worse because like, you have to cater in rent, cater in uh, just like public transport as well. Everyone bikes or walks here in Cambridge, so thank gosh. One thing that is amazing here that like, I really enjoy, which I shouldn't, is like, online shopping. Because it's just so therapeutic, now I finally understand. Like, I know there's Taobao and like, other sources of like, ordering things online back in Asia. But like here it's so easy to buy everything because like you also have free delivery to hit all the products that you buy come in a few days time so it's just so it's just really efficient and convenient and, and free delivery once you hit a certain quota amazing and like also free returns as well amazing um, another way to spend your money is also through traveling and like uh, being in Europe as an international student my dad is actually really really supportive of me uh, traveling everywhere around like this region. I personally didn't really realize that uh, Europe is like at the center of like the whole map or like right opposite the Pacific Ocean. So it makes it very very convenient to travel. A uh, side point, it also makes it very interesting when like you're walking down the street and like to your right someone's talking in like a language not English and like to your left someone's talking in a different language that is not English as well. It's kind of cool how the different cultures all like come together in uh, Cambridge or oh, like uh, you really do see tour groups everywhere but that's because like tourism here is so 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 cheap or at least compared to like you flying from Singapore to anywhere. Last but not least like the Cambridge experience it's itself besides the aforementioned that like would being an international student would significantly affect you in your uni experience I think everyone had the opportunities to actually experience the same things here. One point which is the old buildings here, I don't know whether it's because I'm an international student or not uh, that causes me to feel this sort of way but like looking at the old architecture for some of the buildings here in Cambridge and like also knowing that I'm from a college that began in like around five centuries ago um, it kind of heightens the gratitude that I actually experience like from time to time that like oh my god I'm still here in this university and yeah that kind of makes it really wonderful and like really enjoyable to me no matter how much I study here. Maybe just one more thing that I want to mention as like a last thing uh, so like for me uh, I actually joined the street dance team here in Cambridge it's something I want to highlight as an international student because like for our team of around 20 people like we have 15 different nationalities here to me it's like unheard of all of them are featured in like the beautiful video which i made like a month ago like it probably here somewhere hopefully i can get the link set if not it's gonna be nothing it's just something that i find special because it's just a beautiful way for different people from different backgrounds to come together and celebrate dance and in theory that's like how overseas universities are supposed to work because you want to find out about people who are from different cultures who just live differently from you yep so i think that's about it i hope this is enough information for you to get going if you have any other questions leave a comment down below maybe i'll answer them and uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it yep so see you guys bye, bye.